Hey guys, in this video I want to show you what I've been doing in the past week. Now if you've been following me on Facebook, you may have seen me post a picture of a Ryzen 9 processor. Now so what I've basically done is swap motherboards with somebody in the family. So they've got my 5820K and I got their uh, motherboard with a 1700, uh, Ryzen 1700. So what I did is I took that processor out and put this one in its place, the 39X. Now this is a quite big of an upgrade for me because obviously it's double the cores and it's a faster single core. Uh, so I believe it's a good upgrade for me however the motherboard at the moment is just a stop gap at the moment as it's not really suited f for this process I don't believe um, I really want to try and get an X570 board but those are pretty expensive at the moment I was hoping that those might come down maybe after Christmas or something um, but it's like I said not ideal at the moment but it's something that is actually working I did have quite a few problems with this system but I think a lot of them were to do that I used the previous Windows rather than do a reinstall so the motherboard I've got is a Gigabyte Gaming K5 now this is not ideal because I don't think this board would, it was ever designed to handle such a big processor uh, the VRMs do get kind of hot on it uh, I have had quite a problem a few problems with the memory too. Uh, the memory is supposed to be running at 3200 but I can't get it to run at that at all. I tried 3 gig and that sort of worked but I think I've got problems so I backed it off to 2.9 uh, gig and it seems to be holding for the time being. Uh, it might be because I've got four sticks I believe um, I'm not sure but I did have read on the net quite a few other people running four sticks at 3200 with this processor and not having a problem so I'm not sure Sure if the board is responsible for it or the memory or whatever but I do believe probably an X570 will correct a lot of these issues I'm having I'm also noticing the processor doesn't seem to be boosting as high as it should do I think that is being uh, limited again by the board which again isn't ideal but at least that it's actually working for the time being I did update the BIOS to the very latest one which is F50A uh, this only came out a few days for me and it, it did actually sort a few of the issues I did have so that might be helping as well after we've got it all up and running I had a look at ZPUZ and looking at the voltage it seems to keep hitting up to nearly 1.5 volts so I was pretty worried at that stage that the board was over volting the chip for some reason uh, not that I'm running anything out of stock as I know this board will not really tolerate any overclocking on it and like I said it's only a stop gap until I can get an X570 board later so I did have a look about the voltages as I was kind of a bit worried at seeing 1.5 volts uh, there was a video by J2Sense who says that was way too high and he even uh, down volted the chip by 0.2 of a volt uh, though after a bit more investigation about this as it would seem to be strange if this was happening on a stock uh, I came across this post and basically it says that you uh, you can see these sort of voltages uh, when spiked on the Ryzen 3000 processors. A lot of times these voltages spike because the monitoring programs push the cores up as a lot of times the car cores park also uh, when they're not being used. So the monitoring programs are catch 22 and they're actually boosting the voltages up and making them look worse than they actually are. Uh, I was quite surprised like I said if this would have been happening on stock as well. So it's probably just something that you're not used to if you've come from an Intel processor. Um, but like I said I will link this in the description below so you can actually have a read as it's a pretty long actual post but anyway so another reason I'm saying this board might not be ideal is to because of its boosting now here I've got a Ryzen master set up and you can see here that everything's in a specification um, below where it says CC things you can actually see there's the speed of each core so if we actually go and try this and I'm not doing this as a proper score at the moment I'm just showing you the boosting so you can here you can keep an eye on these boost clocks and you can see here that we're basically hitting around about 3.8 3.9 all core which is a little bit lower I believe I think it should be a 4.1 or 4.2 uh, I think the reason for this is because of this value here it seems to be hitting hundred percent now I'm not totally sure it's something I'm trying to find out 
but is an X570 board have higher limits and that's why they can boost better uh, at the moment if this is the case I completely understand and I think it's actually a good thing at the moment because it's the VRMs on this board aren't that great and if it's a limiting uh, the atmosphere power that's going to stop the VRMs getting too hot but uh, I couldn't really find a definite answer to that one so if you do have an X570 board and you go into a Ryzen Master and you see a higher limit or the same limit uh, let me know because I'd be very interested to know about that one so let's have a look at a few benchmarks so the first benchmark to have a look at is Cinebench R15 now in here I'm scoring 2987 uh, with a single core of 203 now these scores might be a little bit low and they should be because of the memory and the uh, boost being limited so just pair that in mind if you are scoring much higher on that please let me know as I'll be interested to see what the difference is so on to the next benchmark which is Cinebench R20 now in this I'm scoring a 6858 with a single core of 510 now I think the single core is a little bit better but I think that might be down to the BIOS update uh, with the 5820K I was scoring uh, around about 3026 with a single core of 343 uh, that is clocked at four and a half gigahertz so even clocked at four and a half gigahertz this is quite a big leap obviously multi-core will be because you've got twice as many cores however uh, just the single core is pretty important and you can see that jumping from 343 to 510 is going to make quite a bit of a difference so anyway I think that's it for benchmarks I won't go too much into them because they can be a bit boring so let's have a look at a few games and see what happens so the first game I just want to check very quickly is Elite and Dangerous it's a game obviously I play it quite a lot uh, you can see here that it's not really making use of those extra cores um, but I did just want to have a quick check to see what was going on with it uh, you can see it more favours about two or three cores by the looks of it uh, maybe not that obviously everything's running pretty smoothly as you'd expect uh, I haven't got into space or anything at this stage because I've lost a lot of my bindings and that's a bit of a nightmare to reset them all up but anyway so the next game I wanted to have a look at was X4 now obviously I've played the X series a long time uh, in the past with the X3 series it couldn't take advantage of multiple cores and one of the big kind of perks of the rebirth engine that it was uh, multi-core support so the best way of trying it is obviously with a high core count at a modern CPU and see what happens now here you can see it's not really taking advantage of all them extra cores it's kind of sitting around about two or three cores which is uh, not ideal another strange thing is in the maps here you can see the FPS is dropped to around about 22 to 25 FPS so I'm not sure what the reason is for that so the most strangest thing for me is the amount of GPU being used. Okay, VSync doesn't seem to be working here. However, if you look at the FPS compared to the GPU usage, uh, if you're getting over 90% GPU usage, I expect a little bit more than 60 FPS in a scene like this. I'm not sure why this scene is so demanding on the GPU. Uh, when I turn around a little bit more, you would see the GPU usage shoot up to 99%, and all it's got in is kind of some asteroids. So that does seem a bit excessive to me. Uh, um, like here you can see there's 99% usage of the GPU especially regarding to see 54 FPS but anyway uh, let's have a look at something else so it's a quick look at a couple of games one of the big CPU users is RPS3 uh, so I'm just going to run through the settings I've got as you can just see on screen now I don't actually have thread scheduler on because I don't think that really improves performance but I do have a multi threaded RSH on uh, but everything else is basically running at 4k and um, at 60 FPS uh, so I do want to just show you a couple of games and how they perform uh, these are the settings I use for pretty much all of them apart from those two games which is Grand Turismo 5 and 6 so the first title I wanted to have a look at is Sonic Unleashed. Now this needs a very fast processor to keep up with this emulation. As you can see it's a very fast moving game. I've also showed the VRM and that temperatures on the right. 
So the VRM temperatures are roughly around in the 70 size, which is a little bit warm, I think. Uh, the worst case scenario was in Prime, where it managed to get it up to around about 100 degrees C, which is again a bit uncomfortable for me. Um, that's another reason for an X570 board, is that hopefully the VRMs will be a lot cooler. But anyway, let's think for a, another day. Hopefully this is as useful for you, because I don't think there's many RPS3 videos on the 39X on YouTube. I did look for myself quite a lot, but I guess it's because the CPU has been so difficult to get hold of and so expensive. Uh, it's only just recently been actually coming down in price. So hopefully this video will help you if you're thinking about getting a 39X for RPS, as uh, obviously that isn't the only usage for this chip, but it might give you an idea of how it performs, and like I said, there just isn't a lot on the net at the moment. So another popular title on RPS is the Uncharted series. Now this is Uncharted 1 and you can see it's performing pretty well, hitting the 30 FPS cap most of the time. Uh, there are times where it will dip a bit but it is still performing very well. Uh, you can see it is spreading over the cores as well, not too bad, but there are a few cores not being used. Uh, so in some respects, maybe the 8-core CPU is going to be the best value for money for this kind of work. But if you're kind of looking for the future, uh, I don't think the 39X is going to be a bad choice at all. Uh, I was reading about the cores and all that lot and the latency between them, and it seems to suggest some of the posts that were on Reddit and that, that the 39X would suffer from latency quite badly but I just don't see that the case although I can't directly compare it because I don't own the 38x but anyway back to Uncharted now this is coming into one of the most demanding areas which is the bit with the temple which is just after the cutscene now this is where you tend to see the FPS drop quite significantly uh, in the past I would see some of the FPS under 10 in this title at this point so this is just basically the worst case scenario obviously this bit is a cutscene so you want to skip that so yeah, you just go around this little corner and you'll probably see the FPS drop quite a bit. So you can see here we're dropping and we've got just under 20 FPS at this stage. For those interested, this is on Alpha 9201. So let's uh, check out another popular title which is Red Dead Redemption 1. So this is a very good place to test performance because it's very easy to replicate on other systems and it genuinely plays out more or less exactly the same. It can differ slightly depending on load times, sometimes the scenes can load slightly quicker on different systems, but generally it stays within sync pretty good. Uh, bear in mind, like I said, this is emulating a PlayStation 3, so that is a pretty demanding task and most of the times you will try and get around about 30 FPS, obviously 30 FPS is the cap on this. I do believe that the Xbox One version of this title would be easier to emulate as the PlayStation 3 cell processor is a nightmare to emulate. Um, it is a very complicated processor which is obviously going to affect performance and that's why we're using such powerful processors to try and emulate it. Anyway guys, um, I think that's kind of it for this video. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, I greatly welcome them. Do you have a 3900 yourself? Are you noticing any problems with memory? Are you running uh, 3200 on 4 sticks fine? Or do you have to run it at 2900 to get 2 sticks to work? Uh, how is your boosting going? Are you getting a much better boost clock than I am? Uh, am I being just being limited by the motherboard? Um, I also did wonder if you do have an X570 board, do you notice there's any noise from that little fan that's on there? Uh, so it would be very interesting to hear from you guys if you do have that. Uh, but anyway, if you did like the video, please drop us a like. And another massive thing that helps me and the channel, if you haven't already done so, is to subscribe to the channel. I do want to say a big thanks to everybody who has already done that. Anyway guys, I think that's it for this one. Take care and have fun out there.